Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly channel. My name is Isaac, and today I'm gonna to help you assemble your in-ground action grip basketball system with a 50-inch fusion backboard. Before we get started, make sure that the model number of your system is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with your system. So if you've already begun and need help with a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. There are steps in this assembly that require three people, so make sure you have at least two other adults available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, Let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You may want to pause the video now so you can gather the supplies shown on the screen. You'll also need additional tools to prepare an area to cement your bottom pole into the ground. So refer to your manual to see what other resources you will need. This video is meant to be a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, have the assembly manual on hand as you complete the job. It is also crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions of this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. This section goes over how to cement your bottom pole into the ground. Since we're indoors, we'll not be able to do that, but it's important that you do. So refer to your manual in section one on the instructions on how to cement your bottom pole into the ground. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using this sleeve as our bottom pole. Take your middle pole, the one with the warning label, and insert your bolts with the washer into the small holes. Then, on the opposite side, add your sleeves. Then add the pole bracket, oriented like this, and secure the nuts. Slide the top pole onto the middle pole, making sure that the hole on the top pole closest to the bottom lines up with a slit on the middle pole. Then add your hardware to the hole. It's okay if it spins freely, just make sure it's flush. Before continuing, make sure you did the previous step properly. Otherwise, it would be extremely difficult to separate your poles after the next step. We're gonna see the poles together by striking each end on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. You will have to use some force, so watch your toes. It is important that you complete this step properly Otherwise, your poles could separate during use, causing serious injury or property damage. The goal of this step is to cover the slit on the middle pole and to make sure the pole measures no longer than 83 and a half inches. If the slit isn't covered or it measures longer, continue to see the poles or call our customer service department before continuing the assembly process. Secure the poles together by inserting your self-tapping screw in this hole going through the middle pole. Insert the U-bolt into this hole on the backboard brackets or into it like this. Insert the hardware in the small hole under this big hole, adding a spacer in between. Repeat for the hole below the hole label number one.
Insert the rim support channel into this recess or into like this. Then add the U-bolt to the oblong holes. Take a bolt and add a washer, then add a bushing, and insert it into the oblong holes going through the front side of the rim. Then add your T-nut oriented like this. When tightening this hardware, make sure that the bolt rests on the outer edge of the hole. Only tighten so much so the bushing doesn't bulge. Place the rim on the front side of the backboard, making sure that the U-bolt goes through these holes. Then secure the bolts on the back side with the nuts. Add the jam nuts all the way down the threads of the U-bolt. Add the springs, then the spring retainer plate, and secure the nuts. Only tighten until the rim doesn't wobble. Bend the backboard brackets so these holes line up with these holes in the backboard. Then add the hardware, but be careful not to over tighten. Add the short extension arms to these holes on the backboard bracket. If you're having a difficult time getting the bolt through, you may need to remove some of the excess powder coating with the end of your bolt. Tighten until the end of the bolt is flush with the nut. Add the long extension arms to these holes on the backboard bracket, making sure that these two holes are oriented away from the backboard. With the pole bracket facing up, line up these holes in the long extension arms with these holes in the pole and secure the hardware.
Line in the holes at the top of the pole with these holes in the short extension arm and secure the hardware. Place a lock tab onto the trigger, oriented like this, then secure the hardware. Then place the spring onto this location of the trigger. Place the trigger into the handle, making sure that the lock tab goes into this notch. Remove the inner channel from the outer tube, then place the handle on the outer tube, making sure that the lock tab lines up with this notch. Secure the handle to the outer tube by inserting the hardware into these holes on the opposite side. Insert the outer tube bushing onto this end of the tube, making sure that this nub lines up with this hole. Using a paper towel, clean out this section of the inner channel. Place the height adjustment sticker into the inner channel, making sure the 10 foot mark is on this end. While squeezing the trigger, insert the inner channel into this end of the tube, making sure that these notches are facing up. Then release the trigger until the lock tab clicks into place. Insert the channel stop onto this end of the tube, oriented like this. Line up the holes in the inner channel with holes in the bracket, then secure the hardware. Line up the holes on the outer tube with the holes in the extension arms. You may need to squeeze the trigger to line the holes on the outer tube. Then add your hardware. Insert the hardware into these holes on the short extension arms. Raise your system to its highest setting, then add your springs onto hole number two on the backboard brackets. With the closed end of a wrench, pull the springs up to the bolt you just added.
Before continuing, make sure your concrete has had at least 72 hours to cure properly. Also, it's important that you follow the next steps exactly or it'll render your poles unusable. Start by lowering the system to its lowest setting. With the help of two other adults, lift the system onto the bottom pole, making sure that the hole at the bottom of the middle pole lines up with a slit on the bottom pole. While two others continue to hold the system, insert the hardware into this hole on the pole. Seat the poles together by placing a block on the top of the pole and striking it five or six times. The goal of this step is to cover the slit on the bottom pole. If the slit isn't covered, do not continue and call a customer service department. It's important that you seat the poles properly, otherwise they may separate during use, causing serious injury or property damage. Secure the poles together by inserting the self-tapping screw into this hole. Now go ahead and add the cap to the top of the pole. Now remove the plastic film on the backboard. Now add the net to the rim by threading the large loops onto the hooks. Attach the scoreboard to the side of the middle pole by adding a self-tapping screw to the top and the bottom holes. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime in-ground action grip basketball system with a 50-inch fusion backboard. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other amazing products at lifetime.com.